Oh, beautiful souls, welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and this is my intuitive energy update for April 2023. I'm really excited for this coming month. In this video, I'm going to share, first of all, an overview of the astrology of April 2023, and then some intuitive downloads that I've received around the energies of April, um, including this new painting, which channels the power of these energies. Uh, we'll be addressing how to use the energies of 2023 in April in a positive way that will help yourself and others, as, and that will include this month's Akashic message that offers a specific practice that will help you to stay grounded and help you to be a force for positive and peaceful change throughout this month and the next two years. So let's start with um, the channeled artwork. And when I first started to tune into the energies of this month of, of April 2023, first thing I saw right off the bat was this beautiful big horse running free. Um, and so just a lot of air energy around that. The download was winds of change, okay? So we may be seeing some instability, unstable things happening in April. Um, there will be a desire for freedom that was huge. Desire for freedom that may be unfocused or chaotic, all right? So we're going to be <laughs> looking at how to address that. But these are powerful energies and powerful energies for change. And there's a lot of fire energy too that I'm feeling feeling. So potentially we could see some wildfires. So the overall feeling was the heightened intuitive capacity that opened up around the March equinox of this year, now being given free reign to express itself. So as soon as I realized that we were going to be working with big horse energy this month, I just got this big download to reach out to my friend and client, Wendy Mills, who is an amazing nature photographer, and I know she's done incredible work with horse photography in particular. Um, she has a whole book that she created as a fundraiser for the United Pegasus Foundation, which is a thoroughbred horse rescue in California. So this painting is based on uh, some of Wendy's amazing photographs, um, and I'll be interviewing her soon just about working with these amazing animals. So watch for that because their stories are really heartwarming. But she was kind enough to let me use some of her photographs um, as inspiration for this piece. And um, so let's go in a little deeper and, and look at some of the symbolism of horse energy and, and what it means to be breaking free. Horse energy has a lot to do um, with balance and especially this balance, this tension between service and freedom. And I feel like a lot of us feel that, right? We, we really want to help and be of service to others, but we also want our freedom and, and be able to express who we are and express our purpose and, and do that unencumbered, right? Without being totally controlled by others. So it can be a real tension between these two things. And when working on this piece, and uh, this is one of the, the, the messages that came through as I was working with these these images and these horses and this horse energy. Um, let me share my screen here because it, I was just given this very graphic way to understand, you know, the, 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 this balance that we are seeking here. And um, so this represents on the left here, it says service and on the right freedom. Remember the law of polarity, right? The, um, the fourth hermetic principle tells us that everything happens along a spectrum, right? That there will be extremes. And um, in, the, in the case of service, um, the extreme here on the negative side is slavery, right? Um, and so we have emotions because one other thing about horse energy, it connects with the sacral chakra and it can bring up lots of emotions, right? Let's look at some of the emotions around slavery and let's change to red for negative here. Emotions associated with slavery, we're looking at uh, resentment is a big one. We are going to be looking at shame, a lot of feelings of shame. 
as well as often apathy, okay? So watch for those kind of emotions um, that will uh, kind of indicate that you may be in some sort of an enslaved state. And some remember that sometimes, a lot of times that comes through our own self, right? Or through it, past experience in um in former lives all sorts of reasons we should, we can be feeling that but it tends to keep us in that state of victimization or slavery um and before we go on to the positive let's look at freedom here and the negative polarity associated with freedom is going to be lawlessness or chaos right and and a lot of times that is what our ego is afraid of, right? That's what often keeps us in slavery is the fear of freedom and the, the negative side of freedom, right? So if our ego is fixating on the negative, it's going to see any freedom as, you know, having that capacity to bring chaos or lawlessness. It's afraid of that, so it wants to keep us in slavery. Emotions associated with lawlessness and chaos. Anxiety is a big one, and it's one that I think a lot of people are feeling right now. Um, aggression, right? Out of fear, right? Fear, aggression. And, and fear itself is, is going to be a big, big um, emotion around, uh, around lawlessness. Okay, so let's look at the positive poles of each of these. And let's turn this to green. And on the positive side of service, let's just call it divine service. Or we can call it purpose. Right? And um, some of the emotions around that are going to be love, right? Wonder, perhaps, a fulfillment. Okay. And let's look at the other side of freedom and the positive pull of freedom. It's going to be, right, divine order. Right? The freedom, and we can also call it purpose. The freedom to follow your own heart, to, you know, follow your purpose, and that always it's going to lead to divine order. Okay, and then finally, um, the emotions around this, we're going to be looking at things like harmony, um, peace, right? Um, again, fulfillment. Um, you know, abundance and so forth, right? Okay, so why am I doing this? Because let's look at these things. Over here, service and freedom always appear to be diametrically opposed, right? S service versus freedom, you think they're, they're opposites. Um, when we look at the negative side, the negative polarity, they are, right? Slavery being completely control and lawlessness, absolutely no control at all. But when we look at the polarities of each of these, it both comes down, it both comes down to purpose. Okay, so we can see that in actuality, service and freedom are actually two poles on a continuum and when we find balance that's the sweet spot and, and this is true of just about any polarity when we find come together in the sweet spot in the middle we're going to find that balanced and that's going to open up into the divine right um this is the point of love Okay, and so that's what this painting symbolizes, right, is breaking through because horse energy is so much about balance. If you're a horse person, especially, um, or, you know, if that a horse is a prominent spirit animal for you, balance may be one of your biggest things to work with um, because it's it, it can be a very volatile energy. It can be very uh, kind of ungrounded sometimes. Um, and that's why when we work with horse energy, it's a lot of it is about grounding and learning to sit, right? Just think of an equestrian seated in the saddle and they have to really kind of ground themselves into the saddle and they have to come to this calmness and stillness inside in order to connect with that horse 
and help the horse take its tremendous power and its emotional reactiveness and then channel that in ways that are going to be positive and helping to move forward and move over obstacles. Okay, so this painting really symbolizes this balance between freedom and service and how it really um, finding that balance is what helps to bring you forward out of this chaotic energy and into this beautiful moving forward kind of energy with the ears perked forward and in a nice balanced feeling. So before we move on to the astrology of April 2023, um, I just want to introduce this fundraiser that we're doing for the United Pegasus Foundation. Um, as always, I know that there is one person that this painting is meant for. So if that's you, if you're feeling a really surge of energy um, around this painting, pay attention to that because this painting is really going to assist you in working with these, any kind of horse energy that you're working with in a balanced way, in a positive way. And uh, this month, 30% of the price of this original painting is going to go to the United Pegasus Foundation to help them build their new facility. And also 100% of the profits from the prints of this painting this month and 10% of net profit from all the other prints on my website plus 20% of private sessions booked this month are all going to go to help the horses. So links to all of those will be in the description box. And um, with that, let's move on to the astrology of April 2023. Okay, so we are in Aries season. So sun just moved into Aries in late March and we'll be moving from Aries into Taurus on the 20th, but not before the first eclipse of the year. Okay, so on the 19th or 20th, depending where you are in the world, uh, there will be a new moon total solar eclipse in the last degree of Aries, okay? And so as we all know, Aries is this tremendous, high energy, new beginnings kind of sign, right? Uh, so we're working with that Aries energy throughout most of this month. And this eclipse um, in, in mid to late April is gonna be the first of a whole series of Aries and Libra eclipses that are going to carry us through the next whole two years, all right? So this, this month of April, 2023, indicates a whole new cycle of energy starting up, right? And it's gonna be a lot of Aries energy, right? And I'm feeling like this horse energy is gonna be part of that. Okay, so speaking of Libra, the full moon in this month um, will be in Libra on April 6th, and this is going to be a really good time to let go of any negative Libra qualities that we might be holding, right? These may include people pleasing or victim mentality, passive aggression, avoiding healthy conflict, indecision, any of that stuff, getting rid of these will really help you to use that ener Aries energy in positive ways. And uh, speaking of the eclipse, I will be holding a, a special gathering of my free community for star seeds, um, and that will be right around that will be right around that eclipse. So watch for that. Okay, so with all this Aries energy and all this horse energy, this might be a really intense month, at least until the 20th when Taurus season begins. The end of the month may feel more grounded and relaxed. So it, towards the end of the month, um, that may be, you know, when we get more into that Taurus stuff, you may, it, there may be an opportunity here to take whatever new beginnings this Aries energy has stirred up and start to nurture them in a more down-to-earth way. But um, in the meantime, let's take a look at what it looks like to be riding these Aries energies in a positive direction first, okay? So the power is here now to get things done. It's horse energy it can really easily carry you over obstacles if you can ride it, okay? This energy really aligns with new beginnings, with ambition, and with victory. So this is a month where you may be easily find yourself able to overcome blocks and barriers that have stymied you in the past. You may find yourself breaking free in one or more ways to very positive effect in your career and your relationships, your health, your spirituality, pretty much any area where you're looking to expand and develop. These energies, if you're writing them in a positive way, can really help with that. 
um, for some, it may be about starting a new business or a new relationship that's aligned with your soul purpose, or it could be something that really helps to accelerate your existing career or relationship in positive ways. Okay, or it could look like ending a relationship or a job or career or anything else that doesn't serve you anymore. But if that's the case, really keep in mind that the energies this month are really about new beginnings. So if you're experiencing any kind of endings, most likely that's just going to be clearing the way for something better, right? New and powerful to come in or start to grow in a big way. Okay. Also, the energies this month, if they're coming in for you, if you're using them in a positive way, it could really help to open your third eye and receive lots of downloads or dreams that could help you. So really pay attention to your dreams this month. Okay, and on the love front, oh my gosh, um, you know, if you're looking for new relationships, this is an amazing month, and just hold your heart open for that, especially with all this horse energy, right? Remember, that's that sacral energy there. Um, okay, so writing these directions in energies in a ne negative direction, what could that look like? Okay, um, could cause some to question their sanity. It could also create a really ungrounding effect. It could be difficult to separate fantasy from reality in April 2023, okay? So just a caution, if you're dreaming a lot or having a lot of visions, be careful not to lose yourself in the dream world. Ask yourself, what are your dreams telling you about this side of the veil, okay? How can you apply that wisdom that the dreams and the visions bring in practical ways? Okay, so don't be afraid to seek guidance from somebody, somebody grounded who can help you interpret what you're experiencing. Um, an outside perspective can be enormously helpful. If you're drawn to work with me, remember I'm offering 10% off of sessions this month and 20% of um, the profits from, from sessions are going to go to help the horses. Okay, so key is to using this energy in a positive way. How do we use, you know, use these energies positively? One, number one is grounding, okay? Are you operating in reality or fantasy? Are you in touch with your body and taking care of it? Really be honest with yourself and take care of the practical things, right? Um, that grounding is so important. Number two is focus. What's really important? You know, ask yourself this, and that's part of grounding too. Find out what's really important, what's just unimportant stuff or illusion trying to distract you. Keep bringing your focus back to what's really important, okay? What's going to help you move forward? And number three is discipline, right? Watch your impulses, take action and based on principles and ground in reality. Don't be too quick on the draw, but once you do make a decision, stick with it and follow through with focused, powerful, consistent action. That's what's really going to help you use these energies in a really positive way. Those who are grounded, focused, and disciplined will find that they may have enormous capacity to do things this month, okay? Um, a calm and balanced mind can direct those wild energies with relative ease. You may not have to actually do much at all in order to have serious impact. Remember the equestrian seated on the horse, a really good rider. It looks like they're doing nothing, right? Um, just fine little micro movements and gentle yet firm direction, balanced and quiet like an expert horseman will really help you to use these energies and channel them in positive ways, okay? You can intend, use your intention to align and sync with forces of evolution for the highest good of humanity, Mother Earth, and all cosmic consciousness, okay? These are incredibly powerful energies that when you align with that cosmic consciousness will really propel you forward. You can also ask for a gentle unfolding of the timelines, ask for grace, and for the progress through this portal to be as gentle as possible. Okay, and then finally, the Akashic message for this month. I really tuned in, uh, created a sacred space, and asked my Akashic guidance, my Akashic guides, to provide a message to support us in this month of April 2023. And here is what they gave me. Find the still point. Take the time every day to center in your heart. 
ask your heart to show you the way. Your heart will not come to its full power without invitation. Humble yourself before the power of the heart. Ask it to lead. Anchor yourself firmly to earth. Connect your heart with the heart of earth. When dealing with others, ask for the courage to be honest and compassionate with both them and yourself. Find common ground. When you feel powerful emotions come to stillness, ask your heart to show you which come from love and which come from fear, greed, anxiety, or envy. Then allow your heart to direct your action. And that is all. Okay, so thank you for watching. Remember that any purchases you make through me, as well as um, Wendy Mills' amazing book, A Flash of Their Soul, with beautiful photographs of these incredibly gorgeous animals, will go to support the United Pegasus Foundation and help the horses there. And um, beyond that, stay in your heart, stay focused, grounded, disciplined, and remember you were born to be free.